lo and behold, there it was. A combination of two of the most incredible things that I had ever known in my life together in one game. <laughs> Everybody knows Street Fighter, everybody knows X-Men. Everybody that watches any cartoons, you know what I'm saying, you always have that what if factor in your mind. Like, man, what if these guys would fight? When you watch an X-Men animated cartoon and you see like Storm and Magneto flying around, you know, chasing against Sentinels, it really felt like that. It felt like the gameplay really represented what we grew up with. If you're looking at what drew me to Marvel vs. Capcom, it's probably what drew a lot of people to Marvel vs. Capcom, is Spider-Man could punch Ryu. It didn't take more than that, that's enough. But the fact that you had an opportunity to use characters like Gambit or Rhodes versus Cammy and Chung Li. It's a game that kind of just like lets you do whatever because, you know, they didn't exactly know how this was going to play out. That refinement is one of the coolest things to look at, in my personal opinion. My first encounter with the series technically goes back to a Pizza Hut, probably in the mid-1990s with X-Men Children of the Atom, and that game was effectively an extension of the show, which was arguably one of the biggest things of the 1990s. First game I ever seen was X-Men vs. Street Fighter. That was the gateway for me to go check out X-Men Children of the Atom. The first time I probably ever touched a Marvel's Capcom game was Marvel Super vs. Street Fighter. A lot of people in my school, they're like kids um, playing this game, they were able to do air combos, and I was trying to be friends with them, and they said, you can't be my friend if you can't beat me in this game. So I went and took a whole summer playing the game by myself, practicing, so I could learn how to play the game and beat them. And then I actually beat them and became their friends. My personal favorite, to be very honest with you, as a one-on-one -on -one was Marvel Super Heroes. But it was more so of the upbringing playing that game, from like actually spending money to play the game and actually competing to see who was the best in the building or in the world or whatever the case may be. It could be a living room just playing with your homies. Just giving me that competitive edge and that camaraderie with the homies coming up and getting uh, really acquainted with the fighting game community is pretty cool. I think some of the bigger moments from the Marvel vs. Capcom series come to learning the game in an arcade setting. At least for me personally, it was all about that camaraderie, the people that you don't even know the names of, but you know the teams they're using. So you effectively get labeled as the Strider Gambit Kid or, you know, the everybody playing Wolverine kind of guy. Those, those moments hold a lot in my head because it kind of brought everybody together in the arcades. There was this one unifying factor and it was a game. For a lot of people that's MVC2. For me it's Marvel 1 because it goes a few years before. So if X-Men uh, Children of the Atom set the tone, Marvel Superhero set the base. When they started with Children of the Atom, it got really good in Marvel Super Heroes, and then it got even better in X-Men vs. Street Fighter to the point where we get to Marvel vs. Capcom 1, and they have this foundation that really works and it's really good, and then they throw it on its head completely and make the game 3v3 in an absolute, like, wild game with MVC 2 My favorite Marvel's Capcom game, it has to be Marvel's Capcom 2. The fact that you play three characters, and the diversity, the team synergies, and I think the the endless hours I've put into the game is a game where I still find new things about the game. It's so old and the fact that it's 24 years later, I'm still learning new things about the game. I still get excited about the game. It's one of those things where anything Marvel's Capcom 2 related, if I see a cabinet, if I see a setup, I kind of want to go and jump on. I think Marvel vs. Capcom as a series as a whole, Marvel 2 is obviously a big one and Ultimate Marvel 3 is another great example, but this is a franchise and a combination of things that not just brings in casual players, also uh, definitely appeals towards a hardcore mindset. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was always the rowdy game, to be honest with you. I mean, from betting little pennies and just talking smack, it definitely left a lasting impression into the FGC today, I will say flying everywhere, going from like diagonal up, diagonal down, like across the screen, super jumping all over the place. I think Marvel vs. Capcom 2 at EVO is always hype. I think Marvel vs. Capcom and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 specifically really influenced the competitive gaming community, particularly in America, because without it, I'm not sure we have this. Storylines around Justin Wong and Yipes and Duck Vader and Sanford are bedrock for a lot of what has come since to help us build up to the giant events that we're filming at right now. You gotta pay homage to that game because that's where the core hype really started, man. In terms of that energy, in terms of expressing that salt, in terms of really expressing that excitement to the people, in terms of the rivalries, in terms of the continued rivalries. 
I love that. That's the best part of history when it comes to FGC. Marvel versus Capcom is effectively like my game. I have been around a lot of different fighting game communities and have told myself that I can only champion so much and there is very few that I can effectively put my stamp on where it's like, yeah, this is this is the one that I like truly love. And the MVC series as a whole is effectively that. I think the original Marvel vs. Capcom competitive scene helps the current competitive scene and that Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is part of that story, it's part of that journey. If we don't have Marvel vs. Capcom 2, if you don't have the popularity of that title at the time, you don't have it releasing and being competed on console for the first time, and the scalability that comes with that, I don't know that America transitions into these large-scale tournaments anywhere near as quickly. Well, I mean, Marvel vs. Capcom, like, series, it pretty much changed my life. It put me, it got me into the competitive scene, which pretty much got me here today, which is able to pay the bills for the family, you know, meet my beautiful wife, my daughter, and everything, so, if I never played Mario's Capcom, I don't know what was going to happen, right? Maybe my life would have been in a completely different direction. I won my first tournament, and from there, it steamrolled to me traveling across the world. I really owe my life to Mario's Capcom, I think, when it comes down to that. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 pretty much made uh, the man that I am today. It gave me an opportunity to travel the world and speak to people. It gave me an opportunity to really know and feel what it's like to be like a... Uh... I mean, at the time, I wasn't really thinking about it, but now looking back, it kind of felt like you know, when a, when a basketball player was on on, a, on the road for the season, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I wasn't out there all freaking day everywhere, but like, it just gave me that, you know, that first look of what it really was to be a competitor for real. I think the Marvel vs. Capcom collection promotes a unique opportunity because of the limited availability of a lot of these titles. Having them all together at once is something that has never actually happened before. It gives people a chance to go back and see kind of the history, kind of where this franchise came from. You can see why people might have been losing their minds as teenagers in the 90s when this stuff first happened. And then if you really want to check out how the gameplay gets refined over time, which is one of my favorite things, you can see how different a game like Marvel vs. Capcom 1 is from X-Men vs. Street Fighter is from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now with so much ways that you can share information, I think it's very easy for everybody to get involved especially with all the historic matches and stuff that has happened in the past that's so logged in that you can always go back and watch. I feel like there's too many pieces in the Marvel vs. Capcom series where you can get inspired easily to get involved with the game. I don't think we would ever get tired of playing more Marvel vs. Capcom. It's a, it's a dream come true sort of game that allows those characters and franchises and things that you wish could have existed on their own Marvel vs. Capcom as a platform sort of allows that to happen. If you're a new player coming into Mars Capcom and you're like, man, you know, this is an old game, I'm kind of young, I want to get into the game, just pick whoever you want. The combos are so fun. You can literally stay in training mode for hours and literally there's so many people that's going to be playing this game on stream, on Twitch, make YouTube tutorials. So it's really easy to get into. So I hope you guys stick with it and maybe I'll play with you guys in the future.